Welcome to the third week of Accelerated Computational Linguistics. This week, we will start our study of natural language processing. We'll turn documents into collections of features so that we can then feed these features into machine learning algorithms. In this first video, we'll start with a very basic application of this idea. We'll perform sentiment analysis. We'll convert documents into words, words into features, and then we will use these features to compute sentiment values for a whole document. And first, let's try to think of words as bundles of features, of features that describe them. So how about this question? This has been the bread and butter of philosophers for centuries. What is a human? And in general, how would you define what a human is? One way to do it would be to come up with a system of features that set this word apart from other words. So what, what characterizes a human? For example, humans don't have feathers. They are negative for feathers. And they are bipeds. They are positive for being biped. This is a definition Plato gave once for what a human is. And this is a very arbitrary definition. But as a matter of fact, any system that we could use is fairly arbitrary. Defining a word is extremely difficult. And uh, doing it with features like these is very difficult because we would need to find some correct combination. Let's see how far the system can take us. Let's try to refine three words, man, woman, and dog, for example. We could define woman as plus human, a being that is human, and someone who is plus hair. As you can see in this example, the woman has hair and the other being does not. To our left, we have man, which is plus human and minus hair, because there's absolutely no hair. Dog would be a minus human plus hair, because the puppy there does appear to have hair. This system, again, is arbitrary. This is one way to find features that fit the data that we got. And one uh, short comment, we will come back to this, but in general, anytime we have a binary feature or in general an entry feature, we are forcing reality into these categories. And when we do that, we are either leaving chunks of reality out or forcing chunks of reality into these categories and ma uh, making it so that uh, phenomena that are not neatly in these categories becomes invisible or it becomes dissimulated by this other uh, feature. So we will later in the class criticize these kinds of binary systems. But for now, let's see if they can help us with this problem that we have now. In computer science, we use binary systems because we're used to them, because this is the way our computers work. We could easily turn something like not being uh, human or yes being human into a zero or a one. So a woman would be someone who has the value of one in the feature of being human and the value of one in the feature of having hair. A man would be someone who has the value of one in being human, the value of zero in having hair. Like it was for the dog, the values would be zero and one. We have been using features to define words. Let's try to use them to assign emotions to words. Let's try to come up with some system where a word is characterized by its emotion features. We'll use something called the Plutchik Wheel of Emotion. For example, love. What kind of emotions does love conjure? Does it, um, does it entail serenity? interest, annoyance, boredom, pensiveness, distraction, apprehension, acceptance, for example. Let's say we'll use the middle ring, the one that has joy, anticipation, anger, disgust, sadness, surprise, fear, and trust. Does love entail joy? Probably yes. You do. These two emotions do come together. Um, how about sadness? Hopefully those two emotions are not bundled together. In general, let's assign one to the feature that we do associate with the word and zero to the feature that we do not associate with the word. 
love would be associated with the properties of joy and positive, for example, and it would not be associated with properties like anger or disgust. How about a different word, something like hate? Hate could be associated with the properties anger, disgust, fear, negativity in general, and sadness. So these would have the value of one for those features. This is what the system, this is what the NRC word emotion lexicon does. This is a document, a text file with about 14,000 words. And uh, the authors of this lexicon crowdsourced the emotions. So they had people uh, vote on whether love uh, was positive or negative or joy or sadness. And uh, out of uh, crowdsourcing this with a large number of participants, they decided on the actual values of those features. The um, lexicon is here in this URL. So you can see the procedure, the exact procedure sort of crowdsourcing, but it is basically this. It's a text file that has the word in the first column, then the emotion in the second column, anger, anticipation, disgust, and then the value for that feature, zero or one. For example, in line 21, we can see that the word abacus uh, ent entails the feeling of trust because it has the number one for that feature. So how can we use this? Let's say we have a document, a series of sentences for a movie review, and the review says, I loved that movie. It was incredible and the characters were so compelling. This review is probably positive, more positive than negative. The first thing we need to do would be to tokenize it and to normalize it. So we take all the words, turn them into uh, to individual tokens, and we perform some normalization. If something has different spellings, we uh, merge the spellings into one form, um, etc. We turned it into lowercase here, for example. Once you have the tokens and you have removed the punctuation, we have removed the, the exclamation marks, we get the unique stems. The NRC document is not going to have a word like loved in the past tense but it will have the word love in the present tense. So we need to convert the word loved into love. This is done through stemming as we studied in week one. So let's say we have the review. I loved that movie. It was incredible and the characters were so compelling. We tokenize it, we normalize it, and then we stem it to get the vector I love that movie, it be incredible, and the character is so compelling. And then we try to figure out which words in that array are present in the NRC list. We're going to find four words, love, movie, character, and compelling. And then we try to add the values for all these emotions. So in total, no words had the emotion of anger associated to them. One word had the emotion of joy associated to it, and two words had the emotion of positive associated to them. So this method correctly predicts that this review, I loved that movie, it was incredible, and the characters were so compelling, is relatively positive and relatively joyful compared to the other emotions. Let's look at a second review. Maybe you have, that movie's terrible. I hate it and the characters are so boring. Um, we get that movie be terrible. I hate it and the character be so boring after tokenization, normalization, and stemming of the sentence. When we try to see which words in that array are present in the NRC, you get that the, the words movie, terrible, hate, character, and boring are present in the NRC lexicon. You add the, their values and you see that there are two words from this list that have the emotion of anger associated to them. Probably hate and terrible. There's two words that have the association of disgust associated to them. And there's three words that have the general negative emotion associated to them. Uh, probably terrible, hate and boring. So these values 
correctly predict that the overarching emotion of this review is negative rather than positive because negative has th a value of three words that had that emotion and zero words that had a positive emotion. I got in summary, this method, even though it's incredibly simple, correctly predicts the emotions of these movie reviews. As you can see, we can extend that to longer documents. One of your exercises this week is going to be to take the scripts from the first Star Wars movies, episodes four, five, and six, and then to figure out what were the emotions of Darth Vader during those movies. You're going to get all the lines of dialogue from Darth Vader. You're going to compute their emotion values. You're going to add them up. And then we're going to see how he's feeling in each of the movies. In movie four, maybe he's feeling happier. In movie five, maybe he is feeling bold, um, you know, more joyful and so forth. Here we have an example of what it might look like. This is the feelings throughout all three movies for some of the characters that have more lines. You can see that um, the Emperor is angry quite a bit. That is the, lo the lowermost line in the Emperor's uh, summation. We can use this for other um, works of art. For example, this is a summation of positive and negative for the chapters of the Lord of the Rings books. And you can see that some chapters are more positive, some chapters are more negative, and it goes back and forth. Python has many interesting libraries to support sentiment analysis and to do uh, some of the things that we did in week one, like the lemmatization, uh, stemming, and so forth. So this was a very simple exercise, but it accurately predicts the thing that we needed. We can describe uh, meanings of words as bundles of features, but we can also describe the sentiment of words as bundles of features, of emotion features. They give us an explanation of what the, wor what the word feels like, and this is a very simple way to do sentiment analysis.